How's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you four cool projects that ChatGPT made for me in Python while I was drinking my coffee. So to get started, I created actually four different projects. One was a 3D model, a chatbot, a Python logo, and a TikTok scraper. So these are the four projects I'm going to show you, starting with what I believe to be my favorite, and that is the chatbot. So if we tap on this chatbot, I asked it the following prompt and I pretty much told it to create a chatbot that can learn from my input. And then it gave me around 60 lines of code. I also asked it to provide type hinting in my code so I could read it better. And it did that as well. So I was drinking my coffee when I did all of this. So pretty much what it did is create a function that can clean the text so you can actually process it. It created a scoring mechanism so it could find the best match for each one of the inputs. And then it also has a function that updates the responses in the chatbot so it can learn new responses. And then it has a function that actually performs the whole chatbot called chatbot. And I'm going to be leaving all of these projects in my GitHub repository so you can actually play around with these if you want to. And let's see actually how this chatbot works. So if we run the chatbot, it's going to say, hello, I'm a learning chatbot. Please teach me by typing a message and the response I should give. To test my learning, just type your message and I will respond based on what I've learned. And then you can type in exit to quit. But the first thing we're going to do is say hi. And of course the chatbot has zero experience right now. It doesn't know what we're trying to tell it. So what we can do is say, Hi, and by providing a double pipeline, we can teach it a response. So we can say, hello there. Then the chatbot is going to respond, I've learned a new response. So here we can now say hi, and the chatbot is going to respond, hello there. And if we type in something more complicated, such as I wanted to say hi, since that's the highest rated response, it's going to give us the hello there back. We can also give it something more complicated, such as how are you, question mark, and we're going to add the pipelines and say, I'm good, thanks for asking. Now, every time we ask, how are you, it's going to respond that. And we can also say, hi, how are you, with a lot of exclamation marks. And since that's going to rank the highest, it's going to give us back that response. So we're able to teach this chatbot and it's giving us those responses back as well. It's a great chatbot. And if we type in exit, it's going to finish the chatbot. So ChatGPT generated all of this in around a minute with the following prompt. And I was very impressed because for myself, that would probably take at least half an hour, not to mention debugging this would take even longer for me, but I was impressed. It's highly readable, the code looks clean. I mean, there are a few things that could be improved, but you just need to specify that with ChatGPT. The second project I have is a 3D model. I told ChatGPT to create a 3D model for me, and then I told it to animate it. And I mean, there are some things wrong with this, such as importing system and not using system at all. That's fine. What I want to show you is how this 3D model works. So if we run the 3D model and we go to the main screen, it generated this beautiful cube for us. It's in 3D, it rotates. I love everything about it. And yeah, you can stare at it for hours. ChatGPT did this in less than a minute. And the ChatGPT4 model is very slow on my computer. And I guess it's slow on a lot of people's computers because it does require a lot more processing power. So I don't think their servers are being so generous just yet with the speed. So I haven't really compared what ChatGPT3 can do with this cube, but I know ChatGPT4 is doing quite good with this generation. So that was a silly second project, but let's stop that and let's move on to the third project. And the third project is the Python logo. I asked both GPT-3 and GPT-4 to try to draw a Python logo. So first let's start with the GPT-4 approach. We're going to run that file. It drew it in Turtle. And as you can see, it created absolute nonsense. This is the Python logo that ChatGPT4 created. So I kind of gave it a scolding. I said, hey, this is wrong. Recreate it. ChatGPT apologized as it should have. And for GPT4, if we run that on the second attempt, at least it got one of the colors right and it put some eyes. 
but that's all I could get it to do when it came to drawing the Python logo. It has no idea at the moment, or actually tell me if you can get this to work. I could never get it to draw the Python logo, no matter what prompt I've tried. But if you have a prompt that works with that, please share it in the comment section down below. So that was the capability of GPT-4 with drawing the Python logo. And to compare it to GPT-3, we can run the first attempt with it right now. And I thought this was one of the most beautiful abstract arts I've ever seen or interpretations of Python. Python is an interpreted language, so why not interpret the Python logo as well? So that's what GPT-3 gave for the first attempt. And for the second attempt, it gave some more nonsense. It's still following the color scheme, which I found very impressive compared to GPT-4. It could be absolutely random what it did, but chat GPT-3 absolutely won this contest. And finally, I asked it to create a TikTok scraper. So I wanted it to scrape the amount of followers from any account that we insert. And then I asked it to turn it into a TK inter application that we can run on any OS. So it did that, it imported requests, it imported beautiful soups, and it imported TK inter. And it also imported this message box that wasn't used that's fine. If it doesn't use something, that's fine. It's easy first just to remove that as a developer. Our job is done for the day. But what it did is get the TikTok followers. It looked for the URL. It got a response from that URL with the username specified. It passed that HTML and it tried to find the title of followers. If something went wrong, it just said something went wrong. Then it created a function and it created the app under that. So if we actually run this, you'll see that we will get this very nice prompt here and you can enter any TikTok username you want. You can even enter Indently and find out how many followers Indently has. And apparently I only have five followers now. And now I remember why I only have five followers and that's because that's not my TikTok account. That's some fool who actually took that username. But Indently Reels is my TikTok handle. So if I type in that, and I get those followers, it's going to show the correct amount of 6,577. And you can even type in Apple for the Apple Corporation and you'll get 2.8 million followers. If you type in something that doesn't exist, such as that, it's going to give you this error here that it was unable to access the TikTok account, which makes sense, it probably doesn't exist. So the error messages can be fixed. I should have asked ChatGPT to be much more specific with the errors. But for now, it's fine. The program works. It has a user interface that we can easily use and it gets the followers for any account we want. Let's say something such as Facebook. I wonder if Facebook has a TikTok. And if we tap get followers, it's going to give us the amount of followers from Facebook. So those were four projects that I asked ChatGPT to generate for me. They were completely random. I'm still playing around with it. So do let me know in the comment section down below if you have any cool prompts you want me to try out. I will try to include it in the next video. But otherwise, I'm going to be leaving this again in my GitHub repository. So if you want to play around with any of these projects, just click on the link in the description box down below and copy and paste these. Have fun with it. Create your own prompts. Improve upon these. Do whatever you want. But with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.